Uh, hey guys, welcome to a new channel, uh, Leaves and Lungs. So we've been continuing videos on plant breeding. So we've seen so far many of the such important topics. So we have come to a topic uh, that is uh, a bit confusing today. Okay. So I guess you need to understand this topic very clearly because this topic is frequently asked in exams. Uh, there was a question that was being asked last year in UPSC 2015 as well about the pedigree methods, about the advantages and the disadvantages. Okay. So I want you to focus it clearly. Okay. So we'll just move into the topic proper. So before going into the topic, we just need to know what is the meaning of pedigree. So this pedigree meaning is directly taken from the Google search. So pedigree is nothing but it is the record of descent of an animal showing it to be pure bred or it is otherwise known as a recorded ancestry or lineage of a person or a family. Okay, so that is nothing but actually it's like a record of uh, uh, the descent of a family. Okay, so it's like uh, you, your father, your grandfather, your great great grandfather. So the listing of all your uh, generation, it is called as pedigree. So we'll just move into the topic. Uh, so uh, when you do mass selection and pure line selection, you'll be having large number of groups of plants with the same kind of genetic variety and there'll be a lot of homozygous, uh, homozygosity prevailing in all the plants. So it is very, very impossible to find out which group of uh, offspring plants came from which father or mother plants. Okay, so that is um, you can't find uh, which parent produces which plant. Okay. So in order to clear this confusion or it is used to segregate the generation categorically according to their parent, uh, we have different types of method used. Okay. So one is pedigree method, uh, which is going to be discussed right now and other one bulk method and other is backcross method. Okay. So the main objective of all these plans are to develop pure line varieties. Okay. So as we said in the meaning itself is to find uh, the pure bread variety. Okay. So before going into the method, I'll just give you an example. Okay. So this is you. Okay. Uh, call it as uh, F3. Uh, F2 is your father. And uh, okay, F4 are your uh, children. Okay, so F3 is you. This is your father. And this is your uh, children. Okay. F2, F3, and F4. Okay. So uh, you've been uh, you've been like uh, mingled into a bag which contains other generation. Okay. So for example, say them as uh, G2, G3, and G4. Okay. So it's like a lot of plants are uh, clubbed into a pot like this. Okay. So you, uh, in this pot, you'll have a lot of mixture like F3, G3, and uh, f uh, and uh, like uh, e4 like a lot of things will be there okay so you know the generation uh, though you know that uh, genotype of a father is f2 okay so you could find the progeny here okay in this bag you can find the progeny here okay so uh, you could clearly match f2 and f3 because they'll have a lot of characters similar okay so you just place it under f3 you place it under f2 okay so there is another bag that contains lot of four like f4 g4 uh, e4 uh, s4 like lot of things okay by similarly matching uh, g4 uh, like f4 with f3 you can categorically place under this thing okay under a common group okay so you from this you could find that uh, f4 is the children of f3 and f3 is children of f2 okay so you could place you could find out all the family or all the group by knowing their genotypes okay so this is what is employed in the pedigree method as well okay so in this method the individual plants are selected from f2 generation okay and subsequent generation as well and the progenies are tested and uh, during this process details about the plant selected in each generation is recorded in pedigree record uh, and by looking into the pedigree record, we can easily know about the ancestry of their selected parents. Okay, just like knowing your gene, you could easily find uh, who's your children and who's your father. Okay, the same thing is employed in the plants as well. And for proper maintenance of the pedigree record, the basic things required is a crossing ledger. So cro crossing ledger, uh, like, crossing ledger is actually like a, it's like a, a Newman, it's like a naming, uh, it's like naming like a IU, uh, IUPAC naming, like how you name a chemical name, how you write a formula like this. Okay. So I'll, I'll just tell in detail about crossing ledger. Uh, so this ledger actually gives the details about the parentage and also it also gives about the season in which the cross is made. 
so uh, we'll just have some examples right uh, right here uh, so these are the cross number okay so th these are like plant name actually so these are their parentage okay co2 ms9804 uh, co4 uh, co1 these are like a plant uh, parent parent names actually so this is one example example f2 cross uh, f2 cross s 9801 and 7 okay so this is the cross number okay the center part is cross number here you have two terms actually okay the f2 and number 7 f2 you obviously know the plant belongs to the second generation okay this 7 is actually nothing but uh, it is the seventh plant in the f2 generation that is being selected right seventh plant in the f2 generation so uh, when you take uh, f3 generation um, it can be written as like this f3 xs 980174 okay so from this term you could find that this plan belongs to uh, f3 generation and this is the cross number so the seventh plant is actually like uh, uh, it's it denotes actually the uh, uh, this 4 and 7 is actually nothing but number 4 indicates that the 4th plant of the 7th plant of F2 generation. So this is actually uh, F2 generation and this is actually the number 4 denotes actually the number in the uh, F3 generation. So this can be followed till uh, F4 or F5 generation and uh, after F4 or F5 generation certain plants are built into a family because uh, it will be more of voluminous actually you can't write uh, the plant name into sentence actually so that is why it is limited to F4 or F5 generation. So pedigree method it records all the biometric data like plant height, number of branches, number of pods, uh, pod or plant length, seeds, uh, everything you needed could be recorded in the pedigree method. Uh, uh, we'll come to merits of the pedigree method. So obviously you know that uh, uh, it gives maximum opportunity to the breeder to use his skills and judgment for the selection of the plants. So it's obviously the selection of the plants. So which group of plants you needed could be uh, traced from the pedigree charts. Okay, and uh, well, it is very well suited for the characters which are simply inherited. So the characters that are very being simply inherited uh, could be used for the pedigree charts and from that you could uh, you could gain some information like what are the characters that are being simply inherited and also transgressive segregants can be easily identified through the pedigree records. So as I said, as I said earlier it's like transgressive segregants are like the plants which are having the extreme phenotype okay that is there which like example the most high yielding varieties and uh, the most uh, uh, the most disease resistant varieties like those things are called as transgressive resistant it is nothing but uh, phenotypes of extreme nature and also it gives about information about resistance these are all precisely obtained through pedigree methods so uh, demerits is nothing but you know that uh, uh, documentation of all the records of the plant is very very time consuming and uh, it limits the handling of larger population you can't do for a larger population base uh, and the mainly the success in this method is largely depend upon the skill of the farmer or the breeder okay and there is no opportunity for natural selection since uh, the breeder has to have a proper exact knowledge about uh, the pedigree methods and the pedigree charts uh, he chooses actually the whatever all the plants he needed and there is no opportunity for any natural selection and also the selection for yield in f2 and f3 is very ineffective so if care is not taken to maintain larger population valuable material is lost it is very obvious because you have to watch a keen eye over uh, the characters that is being inherited so if you miss the character or uh, the selection uh, the selection of the particular plant will be lost okay so these are the day merits it is very time consuming if the natural selection is lost and uh, you should take a uh, meticulous care of uh, the yield in f2 and f3 generation as well and thank you guys and that brings the end of the topic uh, pedigree methods is very usually has a lot of uh, exams and i hope you have a some insight about the topic as well uh, do give thumbs up uh, do share if you like the video and do subscribe okay spread it to your friends as well because your support means a lot to me and right now i'm not getting proper views so uh, you your support could mean a lot to me actually thank you thank you for the valuable time that you spent on this video thank you